Good morning, church. Happy Easter. You all made it on time with the extra, no, with the, with one hour less of sleep. Say to one or two neighbors, happy Easter. God is risen. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Come on. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. Come. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. Come on, clap your hands. My Redeemer lives. Come. My Redeemer
Good morning. He has risen. Let's do that again. He is risen. He has risen indeed. Welcome on this early, beautiful Easter morning. We lost an hour of sleep, but isn't it wonderful to come together here on a day like this where we celebrate the most joyous event in all of uh, history, I would say, right? Amen. And um, welcome. Um, I'm glad you're here to celebrate together with you. Welcome to everybody online as well, and special welcome if it's your first time today. What a day to join us and celebrate together. And we would love to get to know you. Don't worry, I don't, won't make you stand up. Just sit back, relax, enjoy the service. But after the service, if you've got questions, please come to us. Uh, we would love to get to know you and explain a little bit how things work in Crossroads, how to find your way. There's a connect team out in the lobby at the connect point. We would love, love to talk to you. But for now, let's watch the notices together that our team put together. Hi, good morning, Crossroads. It's me, Angelique. And I'm so happy, so full of joy to see all of you here today, especially on this special Sunday, a very special Sunday, where we all here celebrating the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm going to bring you some of the notices for the coming weeks. First announcement is for next week. We will have the lunch table. As you may know, they always have a very good food. So it's a good time to come to the community center to have fellowship together and have some yummy food. Don't forget next week, you don't need to register. Just come with your friends, Just with all your colleagues, your life groups to the community center. Next, on the 20th of April, we are going to have the worship night. Or <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. This is an amazing night where you, we all here and it's like 300, 400 people, and we all just worship the Lord together and have some good times and fellowship with other people. You don't want to miss this evening. Make sure that you can bring your friends, your, your family to come to this evening. Saturday evening, the 20th of April, you don't need to register, just come. Last but not least, I would like to mention that in our app, we have this special button. Have a look. It said Meet Care. So as a part of our three E station, uh, embracing one another. So we care for one another. So if you ever need any assistance, any support, any help, never hesitate to contact our care team. And now, Let's celebrate Jesus and enjoy the service. Like today, um, when we celebrate that the grave is empty, our hearts are filled with gratitude, right? And one way of expressing our gratitude is to give to give back to God, to invest in his kingdom. To, we want God's good news to, to, to spread. We want his love to, to go from here to, to the world, right? And everything we do as Crossroads, the, either directly or indirectly, is, is, is geared toward that. Either we support our missionaries or we come together here where we, where we seek to encounter Jesus and let him transform our hearts so that as we go out, his love may spread through us. So, give generously, all right? Well, there's a few ways you can give. You can scan the ticket code or, or use the gift app. Or go to our website and set up a recurring payment. Uh, that, that will really help us to predict a little bit of what will come in. Or if you prefer to give cash, there's cash boxes on the exit. Let's, uh, let's pray together. Lord... We stand in awe of the empty tomb, that you have risen, that you are alive, that you have conquered death. Lord, that we are forgiven and we can stand 
before you and have a relationship with you. Lord, we are so grateful that our response is, here is our life. Here, here am I. Here is everything I have. And Lord, we pray that you would use it. Whatever we can give, Lord, that you would multiply it. And that your kingdom would extend, that your word will, good, your, your good um, message will spread. That your love will go through us to the world around us. In Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's worship. Amen. Let's all stand up. Did you see Johan coming up on stage like Moses? No. <laughs> and then we split it again. So, hey, come on. Let's say another, uh, give, give, give a high five to two or three people and say, hey, he is risen. And this is the day that we celebrate as Johan just mentioned. It's the best day of, uh, in history. Thank you, Lord, that we can live in freedom, Jesus, because of you. Because you've done the greatest thing in history. Risen, he's risen, forever glorified.
I have the strong feeling for all the youth here. That last line, and life is worth the living because he lives. Young people, life is worth living because he lives. Amen. I have it strongly on my heart now. You can fill in whatever you want with young people. But really, life is worth the living. Because he lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, all fear is gone. All fear is gone, Lord. Sometimes we're getting so afraid of the future. But we know that we can trust you, Father. Because we're planted and rooted in you, Jesus. And Lord, on this day, let it be that we can say in Christ alone, I place my trust. My hope is found. He is my strength. Let's all sing together with all our hearts. And believe that God is in you. His Holy Spirit is inside of you. Thank you, Jesus, that because of you, we can proclaim that in Christ alone, my hope is found. Through the fields 
Jesus Christ and stone. What the heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are still, when striving seems, my comfort, my only hope. Here in the name of Christ, I the ground, his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, may this Easter bring resurrection life to my heart and my home. May renewal radiate within me and revival emanate through me. May dawn displace the darkness and spring replace the winter in my life. May the God of hope so fill me with joy and peace this Easter, that I may overflow with hope by the power of His life forever. Amen. Amen. He is risen.
Well, I'm sure you can do better than that. <laughs> he is risen. Amen. Amen. I need to say, I've been asked to make an announcement. Uh, we're a bit packed and a bit crowded. Um, there is an overflow room uh, that we've set up uh, for those who uh, have not got a place to sit. Um, we have prepared a room where you can hear and maybe see, I, I'm not sure, and see. You can see and hear what goes on in this room. Here we are, Easter Sunday morning in the year of our Lord, 2024. Here we are, just think of this moment, my beautiful and precious friends and glorious people of God. Here we are, 2,024 years later, we seated here remembering and celebrating Jesus. This here is an illustration and demonstration of the power of the cross, the power and truth of the resurrection of Jesus. Think about it, that we are seated here over 2,000 years later. It's the power of the resurrection. Okay, this... I know we're not charismatic, and, I, and I'm okay with that, because I'm not. <laughs> but this is where you say hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> Today, of all days, this is where you get to say hallelujah. Next week, we can go back to normal. I talk, you sit there and listen. But today, we get to say hallelujah. Friends, over the last few weeks, we have been, uh, our theme for Easter has been the words of Jesus, not what did others say about Jesus, others' interpretation of the words of Jesus, but what did Jesus himself say about life, about God, about us, about life and its meaning and its purpose? The words of Jesus, the revolutionary, the transformative message of Jesus Christ. What did he teach? Today, we're going to continue with that as we look at some of what Jesus said, Jesus' own words about the resurrection. What did Jesus say about the resurrection? Before we do, let's just remind ourselves, it's good that we take this time to remind ourselves, how did we get here? Let's recap the story of Easter for ourselves. Let it settle in our soul. Let's tell the story again as part of our remembering and celebrating. Jesus had been teaching the kingdom of of God. Jesus had been living, practicing, demonstrating, illustrating with his life the message of the kingdom of God, of a loving God who wants to be in relationship with us all. Then came the time. The time came. And it coincided with what the people celebrated this feast called the Passover. It was a celebration where they remembered how God had set them free and delivered them from slavery, from their oppression, from their struggle and their heartache, their misery, the plagues, the last you will remember. And so the people slaughtered a lamb painted the blood of the lamb on the doorposts of their homes, and so death passed them by. And they were delivered, and they were set free. And the time came, as the people were gathering in Jerusalem, that Jesus then uh, entered into, we remember that as Palm Sunday, stepped into on the back of a donkey, into Jerusalem, this time of the year, where people were remembering this, celebrating this Passover. 
And then by Thursday, the day of preparation for the Passover, where people were bringing their lamb to be slaughtered, the frustration had built to its highest point in the religious leaders had enough, in their opinion, of Jesus challenging their status and standing, their position, their power, and their pockets. And they plotted to kill him. We had to get rid of him. And so Thursday night, Jesus spends time with his disciples this, uh, uh, celebrating this Passover meal. But we know as followers of Jesus that, that that night through his words and his actions, he forever transformed our understanding and meaning of the Passover meal. He shared that and he spoke and he said some things to his friends. Uh, later after supper, they got up. He was betrayed, he was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was led away, taken away by the religious leaders, and in the still of the night, behind closed doors, they, they set up a mock trial, accused him of blasphemy, found him guilty, and sentenced him to death. The next morning, Friday, they took him to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, and really after all of it, he found him guilty of the crime of insurrection, uh, as, as saying that he's, that he's rising up against Caesar. Found guilty, tortured, crucified. Mark and Luke tells us, gives us an idea of the time of the day. Crucified around nine in the morning and died at about three o'clock in the afternoon. And then after that, his body was hastily taken down from the cross, prepared for burial before sunset, the start of the Sabbath. His body was prepared and placed in a borrowed tomb. A, stole was, a, a, a stone was rolled in front of the tomb, and both Jesus' friends and foes thought that was the end of the story. But here we are, over 2,000 years later, because we know that that's not the end of the story. So on Sunday morning, that first Easter Sunday, this day that we gather to celebrate that Easter Sunday, some woman went uh, to, to the tomb and they found that the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. What's going on? They saw a young man dressed in white and he said to them, Jesus isn't here, he's risen. So they go and tell the male disciples. They thought, well, you're out of your mind. So they go and look for themselves. Well, at least two of them did and found the tomb empty. Wondered what had happened. Did someone steal his body, perhaps? Shortly after this, Jesus starts appearing. He appears to Mary Magdalene, to Simon Peter, to Cleopas. And on that Sunday evening, that first Easter Sunday evening, he appeared to 10 of his disciples. A week or so later, he appears to Thomas. And then the apostle Paul tells us, appeared to as many as 500 people. And so Jesus appeared and people believed. And here we are. That is the Easter story in a nutshell. Two minutes. <laughs> but the thing for us today as we gather here, my beautiful friends, is we ask as we sit here today and we choose to believe this incredible and this beautiful story about the life and the mission and the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and we choose to believe this by the grace of God, mind you. But what does it mean? What does it mean is the question we ask ourselves as we sit here today. For my life in the year 2024, what is the meaning of it? And that's where we will pause today. And to begin to draw our hearts and minds to focus again on the meaning of the Easter story for us. So that we leave this place inspired, motivated, encouraged, ready to live with fire in our hearts and passion in our bones. I need to take us back to that Thursday night. That Passover meal 
In John's Gospel, chapter 14, Jesus said these words relating to the resurrection. John 14. I love how he begins with words of encouragement. He says, don't be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. And then he says this, my father's house has room to spare. If that weren't the case, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When I go to prepare a place for you, I will also return and take you to be with me so that where I am you will be too. You know the way to the place I'm going. Thomas asked, of course it was Thomas. Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so Jesus begins, and I think, and I need to pause there and fall right in there. As I say to you, he begins with words of encouragement, understanding the anxiety in the hearts of his friends. He's saying, I'm going away, and I can, and I can understand their fear and anxiety about tomorrow and the next day and the future. And he sees their hearts, and he knows their concern and their fears and anxiety about tomorrow and the next day. And he says, don't be troubled. Don't fear, put your trust in me. And it was a choice they had to make. We choose to trust in you, Jesus, even though we don't see or understand or things don't make sense and we don't know what tomorrow holds, but I choose to believe in you. And I want to just right at the onset say this, it is a choice that you and I have to make as well this very day as we hear the words of Jesus echoing through time to you and me saying, don't be afraid, put your trust in me, is a choice that you and I have to make today as we step out of here to face our tomorrow and our next week and our next year. Do you choose to hear and believe the words of Jesus? Don't be troubled. Trust in me. Little hallelujah would have been great there as well, but never mind, we'll carry on. We'll move on. And then he says, and then he says, in my, and, and now it gets beautiful. The promise of the resurrection. He says, can I just tell you something? Can I tell you something great? Can I talk to you about my father's house? Just for a minute. In my father's house, there are many rooms, and I am going. So don't be afraid. Don't be troubled. Put your trust in me because I'm going to get a place ready to prepare a place for you. For you. And when the time comes, I will fetch you so that you can be where I am also. When I read this again in preparation for today, I was reminded of something that happened to my life many, many years ago when I was young and handsome. Uh, I remember I went on, uh, on, and now you're not, on a street evangelism mission outreach trip. I know, it's, I just, who would have thought? To a seaside town in England. Oh boy, people aren't very nice. <laughs> what an experience it was. And so at the end of that day, just reaching out with the love and the message of the kingdom of God, we get to this church that had invited us and we're tired. I'm like, where are we going to sleep? I'm like, oh, we don't think about that. 
oh, we don't really have room. We don't have space. And so in the end, we found this for this hall kind of on the side of the church and, and said, well, we'll just sleep there. It's like, great. Do you have mattresses? No, no mattresses. Pillows? No, no pillows. Blankets? No, you've got no chance. And so there we are sleeping on the ground. And I thought to myself, oh, boy, it's a good thing I'm young. <laughs> The next week, we're invited to an outreach in the Scottish Highlands of all places. And so we go to do street evangelism in the Highlands of Scotland. And so at the end of the day, we're getting ready to go and sleep where we're going to sleep. And I thought to myself, oh boy, here we go again. Get ready to sleep on the ground. There is no room at the inn. <laughs> and so we turn up. We to, uh, into this drive to the place where we're going to stay. And I'm like chirping and I'm asking from the back of the bus, is there going to be somewhere for us to stay? Is there going to be room for me? Is there going to be somewhere to sleep? Somewhere I can lay my head? And the leader turns around and he said, you just watch and see. And I thought, yeah, yeah. And as we turn up, all of a sudden into view came this magnificent Scottish castle. I kid you not, I even have a photo. <laughs> the Scottish castle comes into view. So now not only, and he turns to me and he said, see, I told you there's room enough for you. <laughs> not only did I have my own room, but I had my own wing to choose from, walking down this wing, and there's a room, and there's a room, and there's a room, and I could choose as much as I wanted. I could sleep five minutes in this room and then get up and leave and sleep five minutes in that room. And I could just do that all night long. And so when I read the story about Jesus saying, I love you and I will not leave and abandon you. Don't be troubled about your tomorrow. Put your trust in me because I love you, because I love. I'm going to prepare a place for you. In my father, there we go, thank you. Now you're getting it. <laughs> oh boy, what's happening? In my father's house are many rooms. Room enough for you. Jesus has prepared a place for you. For those who believe in him and put their trust in him because he lives. Jesus, only one other time, used this phrase of my father's house. It's in John's gospel, chapter 2, verse 16, when he talks about my father's house. Interesting, there he uses it in reference to the temple. Go and read it, John 2, 16, in reference to the temple. And the idea that what we must remember here about the temple is this, it is understood in the context of the people of Israel to be the place where heaven and earth meet. And so here Jesus talking about in my father's house of many rooms, what he is drawing to, what, he is, what he's saying to the people is he's kind of hinting towards a new place, a new city, a new world, a new house, a new place, a permanent place of abiding with God. He's saying, I'm preparing for you. Oh boy. That's why we celebrate that's the meaning, the power of the resurrection of Easter Sunday. Christ, because he conquered death, because he lives, has prepared a permanent place of abiding with my creator, my God, for me, for you. There's room for you, he says. This is our hope. This is our resurrection promise the meaning of resurrection for you and me that we celebrate today. You are not alone. Put your trust in me. I'm preparing a place for you. There is room for you, a permanent place of abiding with your creator God. I want you to notice something. In Jesus' words, which I find so beautiful, 
demonstrating for me just again his love for you and me. He says, and when it's right, he says, I will return for you. Notice he doesn't say, listen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the angels to come and get you. Or I'm going to send, you know, some old disciples to come and get you. No. He says, I am going to come and get you. It's beautiful, right? Jesus himself will return for you because he lives. Easter means the resurrected Christ, the story of the resurrection means for us today that we don't have to fear death. As Christians, we believe that Jesus has prepared a place for us, that he will come back for us. We don't seek death, but we don't fear death. Because we know that when it happens, that death is not the end for us. Because Jesus has prepared a place for you and me. That is is what we are celebrating today. Death is not the end. I'm reminded of something Jesus said to a woman about her brother in Bethany, John 11, verse 25. Lazarus had just died, and he turns to Martha, and he says this to her. Martha, I want you to know this, he says. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though they die. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. That is the resurrection. That is what we celebrate. That Christ defeated death. He owns death. And I today choose to put my trust in him. He said in Revelation 1 verse 18, I hold the keys of death and the grave. Why? Because of the resurrection. Easter is about Christ conquering death and the promise that because he lives, I too shall live in him. The meaning of Easter is captured in something the, uh, the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah 25, verse 8. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Huh? But Easter is far more. Far more than just my own personal survival. Eternal life. For me, Easter is far more than that. Easter is, in fact, the Resurrection Sunday is this dramatic pronouncement into all of creation that Christ has defeated the power of darkness. The meaning of Easter. You see, it's not just about death. It's about evil and hate and darkness and injustice and immorality and cruelty. It's about sin. It's about free Jesus Christ conquering through his resurrection the power of sin over us all. Christ has defeated the powers of darkness. And because of that, you and I, further meaning of Easter, have a living hope. Because of that, you and I live with hope. And that's why you and I get to say these words with conviction. We get to say these words, and let me just maybe say to us, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say them, and then I'm going to invite you to say them out loud with me. And let's make it the anthem, the motto of Easter of our very lives. And that's why you and I can say that the worst thing is never the last thing. That is the message of the empty tomb. 
that Friday, the death on the cross, the worst thing, Sunday tells us is never the last thing. You want to say it with me? The worst thing is never the last thing. The worst thing is never the last thing because Jesus is alive. We believe that because of the resurrection, that no matter how bad things get in this world, and they're looking pretty dodgy, I might say, President of Poland, I read in the news yesterday, said we need to open our eyes for we are in a pre-war season. The president of Spain said, please stop saying that. We don't want people to get scared. (laughs) I thought it was so funny. (laughs) But as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, and because of the resurrection, we believe that no matter how bad things get in our own lives and in the world around us, that they will never, ever ultimately have the final say. They might for a season, for a time, but evil doesn't have the final word in our lives. Christ has won the victory. Now you say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Life. Has conquered death. Light, darkness, love, hate. Jesus ends the Last Supper with saying in John 16 33, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Then I want to end with this. In John 20, verse 21 and 22, Jesus says these words as we further seek to understand the meaning of Easter Sunday. Jesus said this. He looks at his disciples, and this is on that first Easter evening. That first Easter, that first Easter Sunday evening, he looks at his disciples and he says this to them. As the Father sent me, So I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Oh boy, we can preach a whole sermon series on that verse. But what's happening that we need to be reminded of and understand as we seek to look at the meaning of this day that we celebrate for our lives today in the year 2024. We need to pause here. As the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. It's not just a general sending. Okay, well, God bless you. Go on, go, go on your way. Live your life. Do your thing. It wasn't just a general sending. It says, I'm sending you in the same way that the Father sent me. In other words, with a mission and a message of the kingdom of God. That's how I'm sending you into the world. And so we need to understand and we need to be reminded today, whether I'm a nurse or a doctor or a teacher or an accountant or an IT person or a mom or a dad or a whatever I am. Easter Sunday gives me a new message and a new mission. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. And so for me on this first Easter, I think we find just that you and I have been commissioned. We have a mission. To take the message of the risen Christ wherever we go. So that my life will echo the resurrection story through time and history. Not just do we find ourselves because of Easter Sunday commissioned 
I'm sending you, but also I find here, I think what we must realize, a, a, a constituting of the believers of God. We give in a new community, a new family. We, you're part of, you belong to, you've been bought with a price. You belong to me. We are together. We are family. We are community. You belong. And we have one mission and one message. <laughs> and then, I love how John writes. You know I love John. He says, and then he breathes on them. Do you think John just writes that for nothing? Of course he doesn't. He says, and he breathes on them. And I think John needs for us to understand and connect to go back to Genesis. You remember when God breathes the Ruach, the breath of God, life into dead bones and dust. And it's as if, and this is what Resurrection Sunday, what Easter Sunday is, as we look at the resurrected Jesus, is we have been given new life. The breath of God in us has been breathed into you and me. We have a new message, a new mission, a new family, a new community, a new power, a new life, a new ending. So by the way, The promise of Easter is the new breath of God in you and me, a new life with a new mission, with a new message, together with you, a new community, a new family, a new power of the Holy Spirit empowered to live this new life, and a new ending. life eternal with my creator. And so I want to ask you as I close, how will the resurrection story play itself out in your life? How will God use your time, your talents to continue echoing through time and history the story of Jesus. How will it play out in your life? As the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. We want to give you an opportunity. Isn't that nice of us? We want to give you an opportunity to say, Lord, use my life in a small way, an instrument participating in the resurrection story. May the story continue in my life. Our children, your children, have been making flowers. Beautiful flowers for us they have made. And on those flowers that they made, they have written a name that they feel they would like to pray for this person. Isn't that nice? They want to give those flowers to you. One per family. Otherwise, we won't have enough. <laughs> and ask you, will you pray for that person on that flower? Will we commit? Well, can I say till the end of the year? Is that hall bar? <laughs> to the end of the year to pray for that name on that flower. Because you and I want to show our children the power of prayer. So that as they see the situation and the lives change that you have been praying for, they come to believe. 
And the story of the kingdom of God continues. Symbolic of new life, new hope, new mission, new power, new message. All of the things I've said. And so what we're going to do, we're going to have communion together first now. But after communion, in the lobby, uh, you will find a garden of sorts. Take a flower. One per family, so we've got some left for the second service. But commit to pray for that person on that flower. Put it somewhere, not in a drawer, but somewhere where you will see it and be reminded to pray. And here's what you pray. Lord, as I have died to self, and as I have entrusted my life to you, and as you have breathed your Holy Spirit, breathing your new life and new purpose and mission in me, as I've seen your transformation in my life, I pray that for this person. Use my prayers to continue the resurrection story and truth of the risen Christ and make it evident in this person's life. May my children, may the next generation see the power of the empty tomb. Amen. Amen. If you have not received a communion cup, can I just also say to you, I know that this doesn't taste great, but that's not the point. <laughs> what I want us to do today is we, we gather around the Lord's table. On Friday night, you shared communion with, by yourself. It was a personal moment of reflection and prayer. But Sunday, Easter Sunday, I want you to share communion with someone else. You go because the words of Christ are ringing in your ears. As the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. I want you to go and take communion and share communion and exchange communion with another person. That's how we're going to do it today. But first... We remember that our Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given, broken for you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, poured it, gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and drink, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Oh, Jesus, we remember you. Alive, risen, preparing a place for me. We remember you, our risen Lord. And so we live with a living hope. Because of you. Amen. I invite you to find someone, either the person you're sitting next to. If you have to get up and go somewhere, that's fine. Let's have a little bit of chaos. It's okay. Find somebody and share and exchange communion with that person. You take the bread and you say to them, the body of Christ given for you and then the wine you give to them and you say the blood of Christ shed for you
taking communion. Just take your time. Take your time. Don't be rushed. For the ones who've uh, taken the communion, let's all stand up. Let's reflect on what uh, the words of Paul spoke to us. What a beautiful atmosphere, Father. What a delight to be in your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for calming our hearts, calming our minds. Filling us in you with your Holy Spirit. I cannot live without you, God. I cannot live outside your presence. We were waiting without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt that stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tomb and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who come to the father are restored then the church of
God till. Thank you, Jesus. We've come to the end of the service. Um, I just wanted to stay in worship a little bit, but hey. As we go out today, let's take the, the, the great message of Easter with us out. And as we do so, let's, let's pray the prayer of blessing over each other. To bless each other as we go out and bring the good news. So let's hold hands. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Have a wonderful Easter.